Oh hey, what's happening there YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housework and today we are going to be building a very simple tracking mechanism for a 2x72 belt grinder. In this particular case, we're building the mechanism for my design, which is the Revolution 2x72. I have been designing it and cultivating this project on YouTube now for the last few months. And ultimately, a couple months ago, we released a plan set and you can now buy that plan set, download it and build your own. Uh, we've since added parts and laser cut parts and all kinds of other things to the uh, sort of assortment of things that kind of go around this grinder and it helps you in building one for yourself. One of the major downsides to this design, in my opinion, has always been the tracking mechanism as it relies on a third party vendor to actually provide you with said tracking mechanism. And being that uh, we're all metal fabricators or knife makers or whatever you'd like to do, it's kind of cool to be able to uh, build every single piece and part uh, and, and it's now your own, right? So I spent the entire day yesterday fabricating this. Uh, this is just a, uh, a prototype of what I was thinking. The, a tracking mechanism on a 2x72 bell grinder is not a complicated uh, endeavor at all. It's actually just a, a hinged piece of metal that has to lay flat and something has to be able to articulate it this way and it has to be able to articulate it this way. So, you know, when you think about it in terms of what it actually does, it's very simple. The concept is very easy. Now, I wanted to come up with uh, the idea that somebody would be making this themselves. And when I designed this and cut it out, I realized it's still, as simple as it is, too complicated. I don't think it needs to be this complicated. So I do all my best thinking in the shower. I was taking a shower this morning and I was like, huh, what if I move the hinge to the inside of the, uh, the design instead of the outside, meaning um, that it would nest together like this. So I sat down in SketchUp and I played around with the concepts. I really like the idea that this mechanism actually is the same width and the same uh, height. Both pieces are two inches by one and a half inches. So it really greatly reduces the ability or your need to uh, sort of fabricate a whole bunch of things. Really all you have to do is cut these pieces of steel out and drill a hole straight through them and you're pretty much there. You've got to tap uh, the, uh, the threaded uh, hole for the half inch bolt that holds a wheel and drill a hole in the top so it can mount to the actual uh, tensioning bar. But other than that, it's a fairly simple process, right? So, uh, and also you can go out and buy a one and a half inch by half inch piece of flat stock or bar and create this with almost uh, like four cuts. So to me, in my head, I started thinking, well, and we do it that way, the bolt is shorter, there's a lot less cuts involved, and if you have a CNC plasma, you can do whatever you want. I mean, you can create this thing and make it as pretty as you want or as ugly as you want, but ultimately it does the same job, right? And in this case, I was going for simplicity, ease of use, and also uh, the bolts, being that they're a little bit shorter, are actually cheaper. So uh, yeah, I thought about all those things, and this is the design I have come up with. So today in the shop, we are going to actually make this thing and uh, test it out. The first and hardest part of this process is going to be uh, cutting that piece of half inch plate. And in my case, I buy my half inch plate 24 by 24 inches. So it's a big piece of plate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that down to uh, a rough size and I'm gonna get it shaped into a rectangle and then we'll kind of draw out our final dimension so we can start cutting it on a bandsaw. Okay, so now we got the bar stock cut out. This is two inches wide by six inches. I'm just gonna give us a little bit of room here to play around with. Uh, that just seemed to make the most sense to me. Now I'm gonna take it on the belt grinder here and I'm gonna clean up these edges. And if you don't have your belt grinder already assembled, you can use just about anything to clean up these edges, straighten them out just a little bit. Remember, done is better than perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, you can use an angle grinder, you can use a, like a Harbor Freight, uh, anything with like a ceramic belt will chew through half inch plate uh, fairly easily. Uh, and in this case, I'm cutting it out of a plate 
and you may have already gone and just bought a piece of bar stock so you may not even have to do this step. Now one of the cool features of the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder is that it will completely turn on its side and if you pull the uh, work rest out, put it back in and turn around this work rest, you now have a really nice big horizontal surface to work up against to get uh, those long, if you've got any long lines like on the side of this steel plate that you want to run, you can now do that. Okay, so now we've got the bar stock all kind of made for lack of better terms. Uh, you may not have to do that step. Like I said, it might just uh, be that you can go out and buy a piece of two inch bar stock. This is uh, six inches long. Uh, it's a little more than what I needed, but I figure if I mark my lines this way, then I'm cutting through the stock this way and uh, I might have a little bit left over. I might be able to make another one of these tracking mechanisms if I'm lucky. Yeah, you can see how easy it is with the Revolution 2x72 to achieve really precise, clean, flat lines. You know, that's part of the design of that grinder is that you'd be able to get a machine-like quality from uh, just a simple belt grinder, really. So uh, anyhow, let's continue on. I'm going to mark down all of my measurements using a caliper, and then we're going to cut these pieces out on a bandsaw. Okay, so now we got it all cut out and the holes drilled through. It's not perfect. Uh, doing it by hand is not ideal, but if uh, you had somebody CNC cut this, it would be pretty straightforward. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have, you know, some imperfections. doesn't bother me too much as long as it functions correctly. Uh, you can see the holes are lining up pretty good, and it's probably going to be a tight fit uh, with the, these bolts because I only have a quarter-inch drill bit, and... You know, it's um, a quarter inch bolt, so not a lot of play in there, but let's see if we can get it through, let's see how it sits. Not too bad. Looks like it would swing just fine. Not on here. Be in the money. All right, so now we have to drill the hole for the threaded bolt that will go through the tracking wheel. And uh, one of the things that I had trouble finding was the, the right drill bit, but I went to Home Depot 
And we, what we need is a, a half inch 13 tap for the bolt and the drill bit is a 27 64 which is an odd size. It's, it's not common, but uh, Home Depot actually carried this whole set for 10 bucks. You get the tap and the drill bit. I didn't need the tap, but I did need the drill bit and I couldn't find it anywhere else, so we got it. One of the things I like to do is uh, use a uh, center punch, one of these cheapies from uh, Harbor Freight works pretty good actually. Uh, for about three bucks, it makes a pretty awesome tap follower. Okay, so now we've got our hole drilled here for our mounting bolt for the wheel. Uh, all we've got to do now is drill the hole in the top of this, which is this hole right here, so that we can mount it on the grinder. It's a 3 8 inch hole in my case. All right, so uh, we've got everything machined out the way we want it, and let's quick assemble it and see if it will track. I've got uh, all of my little pieces and parts here. I've got my bolt, I've got my, my four inch tracking wheel, it's a little bit crowned. And yeah, let's give it a shot. That was reverse. Let's go forward. Let's try reverse again. Let's go forward. Let's go reverse.
Well, all right. So uh, just to recap, it is 100% success. I am super impressed with its ability to track in both forward and reverse with very minor adjustments. Um, I'm also very impressed with this uh, set of wheels that I got from KnifeGrinderParts.com. I'll create a link down in the description so you can go find Chaz's website. He's a splendid guy to do business with. I'm, I'm not uh, affiliated with him in any way, uh, but I am, uh, I'd like to promote his website. He, he makes really good, high quality wheels and um and and, and I, I would love to promote what he does there you did see i made a a little notch a little uh a mark here on the 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 arm of this tracking mechanism so that i can kind of uh if this were to ever get out of alignment i would be able to uh, realign it quite quickly um, i am going to start selling the hardware that will bolt up to one of these so i will include that on uh, on the website at some point which is just the bolt and the brass, the cool brass spacers that make this thing functional. And it's the right size bolt so that it'll hold this wheel and not have a ton sitting proud on the, uh, the bolt sitting proud on the outside here. Uh, again, I think that this is super useful. Um, of course, you can go purchase a tracking mechanism and a wheel. I think on eBay they go for about 60 bucks. Uh, for the mechanism itself and the wheel, which isn't too bad. Uh, however, um, you know, you can build one with some scrap half inch plate and make it work for you. And you can use Chaz's wheel set. The wheel set I got from his website was two platen wheels and this four inch tracking wheel all shipped to my workshop relatively quickly for about 120 bucks. Uh, the, the thing about that set though is it doesn't come with the nuts and the bolts and all that to make it functional on your grinder. Uh, I do sell those on my website, housemade.us. You can check that out. I also sell plans and the plate steel for my Revolution 2x72 belt grinder. Uh, so, you know, go check that out and it would help support everything I've got going on right here in my workshop. If you got something out of today's video, guys, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you hit that little bell, you get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. There's many ways you can support my channel through Patreon, through uh, my Teespring store. You can buy t-shirts and merch there. I am going to expand uh, some of my uh, merch stuff onto my website. I found a really cool plugin for my, my Shopify site that'll allow me to uh, uh, sell some really cool stuff, um, you know, uh, my housework uh, merch and stuff. And I've been really working hard on that with my wife, Sarah. She's putting uh, some cool graphics together and we've got kind of a new slogan that we're toying around with and uh, that, should be, that should be rolled out in the next couple of weeks or so. Also, you can, um, you can uh, buy me a coffee. There's a link down at the bottom. You can buy me a coffee. Uh, any of those things will work great for supporting my channel. Also, my Amazon store, you can go through and click through to Amazon and if you purchase something I get a small little commission from the purchase that you've made. As always guys I really enjoyed being in the workshop with you today and I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House and this has been Housework. Uh -huh.